All right. So life is going crazy as always and seemingly more so. And yeah. what a great time for a session. Who knew when I invited this thing that we would find ourselves in this? What a perfect time. So what can I help with? It is. I want to really understand. I want to... I wrote this down from your video the other day. Okay. Yesterday. I wrote it down, finally. Because okay. you went slow enough that I could <laughs> pause it and write it down. And, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really study it. I just, I want to understand it. Okay, so I specifically, want. specifically to the letter, what exactly do you want to understand? Like if you could get one How thing out of this call. I am. If you could get one thing out of this call that would not only help you right now and that you'll be able to use again and again and again and again, what, what is that? How am I creating all of this shit? Okay. All right. Perfect. So my intention, Patty, my intention is I had – someone who did the level one with me one session, right? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we undid her single biggest, deepest life issue in one session. Thank you, babe. I'm talking un fucking believably amazing. And when I get on a session, I look at it like this. What if I die at the end of this session and the person never gets my help again? How do I make sure they got everything during that session that I could possibly give? So every second, even these words right now that might appear to your mind to be a preamble, they're not. Okay? So just even later on, you're watching the replay of this and you say, wait, what is he really saying to me when he says, you know, I'm making sure every minute. I'm hiding diamonds in every sentence, but they're not really hidden. It's just a matter of you being present. So the first thing that I want to bring to help you with is wanting to understand the desire to understand and having the desire to understand being your primary desire is a form of self-sabotage in itself. Because there are things you could want that would be infinitely more serving to you than understanding how you're creating this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor the request, and I'm also going to be doing other things. You follow me for the start here? Okay. Second, mm -hmm. you want to understand how you're creating the shit. So what you tell me when you say that is, I believe I'm creating shit, and I don't like it, and I believe there's something wrong with it. And if I only understood how I'm creating the shit, I could stop creating the shit. I'm going to offer to you that that's not true, but I understand. And for many years, I felt exactly the same way. If I could just understand how I'm creating this shit, I could stop. That's not how it works. Because it, to understand how you – remember the quote by Einstein, the significant problems that we face cannot be solved with the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. Well, I'm proposing to you that the thought, I would like to understand how I'm creating this shit, that thought is the thought that's creating the shit. So the thought that's creating the shit says, well, if I could only just understand how I'm creating this shit, then I would be free. That's the same level of thinking that we're at when we create the shit. And that's the thinking that creates this shit. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm creating the shit, which keeps me creating the shit. And now I understand how I'm creating the shit. So now I know why I'm in the shit. And all of a <laughs> okay, you see, that's okay. the frantic circle that you actually want to step out of. You don't want to okay. fucking understand that shit okay i don't i don't often say take my word for it in fact 99 times out of 100 i say don't take my word for it on this one thing just fucking take my word for it you've been around <laughs> a couple times honey okay yeah so, i know right. so watch this now do you have my book yes okay at the end of the eighth chapter I have the two breathing videos, right? There's a link at the end of the eighth chapter to uh, breakyourselfhelpaddiction.com forward slash breath. Now, listen, 
with all your soul to me, and then I'm going to help you get out of this. Over the last nine years, I have just raised my prices and raised my prices, you know, as I've gotten more and more out there and living in Hawaii is not fucking cheap. <laughs> and so I've just been raising my prices. I'm at the place now where people pay 24 grand to come sit with me for four days and then I do three months of follow up with them. And to those people that just paid me 24 grand, the number one thing that I focus on with them is how to breathe and make it their habit until they realize that that's not their second nature, that's their first nature. Because until you make that breathing the most important thing, and I'm not going to spend our hour on that because I have videos there where you like I, it, I would be dishonoring your time to walk you through that here but I will tell you right now that if you don't make learning that breathing and mastering that breathing and it ain't fucking rocket science if you don't make that a higher priority you'll never get out of this loop that breathing when you do it you take your mind. It's the opposite of understanding how I'm creating the shit. You quit standing under understanding. You quit standing under how you're creating the shit. And you step into the sunlight. And by breathing and being present, you instantaneously stop creating the shit. And you are present so you no longer perceive it as shit. Okay, so that's more important. Now, okay. I'm gonna now I'm gonna help you understand okay. how you create the shit. <laughs> because now you can because you're gonna meet it from presence. So everything that you think you know, Patty, everything that you think you know shows up in front of you and you call it your life, the world, and the universe. Let me say that backwards. Everything that's showing up as what you call your life in the world and the universe is everything that you think and believe that you know. You're not creating it and you're not attracting it. Those are misunderstandings that are held by 90%, 99% of the spiritual fuckers out there. It's a misunderstanding. You're not creating your reality. You're seeing what you think and believe to be true as your reality, but you don't know how you're bringing it about. So you're trying to find the mechanism by which you're bringing it about. What you're looking at 24 seven is an endless mirror, a multi-dimensional mirror, not like a two dimensional flat one in the bathroom an infinite dimensional mirror and everything that ever shows up on it reflecting to you is what you think and believe that you know to be true, including the worst. If you didn't think and believe that it was true, if that wasn't stirring in you, it couldn't be stirring outside of you because there is no outside of you. There is nothing outside of you and you've you've heard this. You've kind of had the idea before, but to step from having it be an idea to living it requires that you rise into a higher state of presence, okay? So so check this out. Oh, oh, this is so fucking awesome. This is a lot of stuff that I talk about when I when I work with someone they'll pull it out of me from a different angle. So this is something I've never quite said before. It's coming out for you. You're ready to hear it. Okay. Einstein said, we can live our life one of two ways. We can either live as if everything is a miracle or we can live as if, as if nothing is a miracle. Now what he's leaving out is what everybody else thinks. So I'm going to encourage you, the more you breathe now, you've, have you ever seen those breathing videos? 
You're just one of those stubborn fuckers like me that just refuse to do it. I get it. I totally understand. I, okay. I do it whenever I think about it. Okay. The only you, thing is I don't think about it often enough. That's right. So so I, I tell people make reminders <clears throat> on your phone. Make reminders around your house. Have things that pop up in your calendar. I have people there's something called insight timer. Insight timer. You can set it, you download it on your phone. And then it, have it set to go off every 15 minutes with a, with a you know, you can pick like a, a tune-in fork or a crystal bowl, bowl or one of the metal Zen bowls and have that chime go off and what you program yourself. When that chime goes off, that's reminding me, oh, yeah, check my breath. But don't just do a one breath. Oh, yeah, that reminded me to take a breath. No, it's reminding you this is how to breathe. The people that get the greatest results with me, the people that go the furthest with me, are the ones who take my advice on this breath thing and make it the most important thing in their life. So the only thing I'm, I'm going to go into this deep thing that I was about to say with you, I'm just going to offer this. When you look at Maslow's hierarchy, right? Of all the things we need, the one we die without first is breath. That's a fucking clue, honey. That's a clue, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> like you can go without water for a few days. You can go without food 40 or 50 days. You can go without a blanket if it's not too cold. You can go without a blanket forever. You can go without a necklace or a friend, you know? But man, that air, they cut that air off five minutes later, you're dead. That's our clue to ourselves. Wake the fuck up and honor this breath. If yeah. breath is that important, then it would make sense that less than optimal would affect everything in the system, including our consciousness and our awareness. So making it number one. Patty, if that's all that happened on this call, you will get a thousand times your money's worth. I'm telling you, but you, let's go beyond that now because you're going to go watch those videos and then you're going to download a timer and you're going to have a chime go off every 15 minutes and you're going to be serious about it this time so that what I say actually sticks and you can use it. All right. Now, okay. we can, I, I, I watch all these smart spiritual people hear Einstein's quote and make a beautiful meme with a picture and share it without ever fucking thinking. <laughs> what does he mean by that right so let's look at it for a minute because he's he's giving us a diamond mine not a diamond a diamond mine with that statement mm -hmm. we can either look at life one of two ways we can either look at it as if everything is a miracle please notice that he didn't say we can look at, at it as if each thing is a miracle. He said we can see it as if everything is a miracle or as if nothing is a miracle. And what did he leave out? What 99.99999% of the people are programmed to think, which is that there are occasional miracles. Now, I got a question for you. We don't have to come up with a perfect answer, but it's a pretty simple question. Is it is it possible that even though we all think, oh, look, that was a miraculous event. That was a miraculous event. So we think that occasionally miracles happen. Is it possible that it might be true that instead we are rarely occasionally in the place of awareness to notice the miracle that's always there? Mm -hmm. So this changes everything. We move over to the awareness that A Course in Miracles calls miracle readiness. Presence, breathing, brains turned on, nervous system activated, not sitting down with my pen and paper trying to mathematically figure out so I can finally understand how I create this shit. Instead, <laughs> choosing <Wait> presence. <laughs> does that sound familiar at all? Instead, yes, choosing, choosing presence, the calmer I get, the more centered I get, I begin to live as if everything is a miracle because I become aware that everything isn't things. 
There are no things. There are no people. There are no events. There's one infinite expanding miracle and only my state of low presence had me perceiving separation and distance and randomness and and accidents in a universe that's one light expanding in all directions simultaneously without end from one coherent source accidents aren't possible so to perceive accidents keeps me in a state of fear. What when's the next accident going to happen? That's not presence. That's panic. So we can either live in presence or we can live in perpetual panic. We can either live as if everything is a miracle or as if nothing is. What's the difference? People talk about meditation. I got no issue with meditation. It's just why they got to make it something different. It's, it's, it's presence. It's choosing to I be have present. A problem. I have I have never been able to meditate. Me neither. Successfully. Me neither. That's probably why, huh? Yeah. So yeah. fuck meditation. You know, I made a video. Okay. Fuck meditation. Fuck meditation. I mean, it's. I really don't mean it as detrimental, you know, as mean as it sounds. It's, it's a very humorous angle I'm taking. Fuck that. Just be present. Choose to breathe. And, and the beautiful irony of this, Patty, I mean, this is, this is come on. This is, this, when you take your attention off those things and you simply just... Just bring it, because, well, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, I'll, I'll go and give you the punchline of the joke I was going to do. You can't take your attention off those things. Try not to think of a pink elephant. Try not to think of a pink elephant. Try not to think of a pink elephant. You can't take your attention off those things. All you can do is put your attention on something else. And of all the things in this universe that you can put your attention on that will take you the closest to home. Of all the things in this universe that you can put your attention on that will take you closest to home kind of makes a little bit of sense maybe that it might be the one thing that we can't live without most the one thing that we would die first the one thing at the center or the root of the core so i could put my attention on food how many people have eating disorders i could i could put my uh, attention on movies i could put my attention on distraction I could put my attention on jerking off in the corner. I could put my attention temporarily on petting my dog, put my attention on trying to finally understand this. But all that still hold, all those are still holding my attention on form, all of them. But if I bring my attention fully to the breath, the body and the breath, let me see, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Now I got that. Now let me just make the duration about the same. See, I'm already starting to calm down. I'm already starting to bring my systems back into balance, which all that external focus could never do. In fact, that external focus is a delusion because there's nothing fucking external. All of us spiritual fucks know it, and then we forget it. As quick as we remind ourselves, we forget it again. So the only answer that I have found that always works. Oops, wait, what was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, now I'm breathing into the nose, out the mouth. I make the duration about the same. Now let me just check in and bring even more presence. I'm not thinking. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not trying to get it right. I'm just saying. I'm gonna on top of breathing into the nose and out through the mouth and making it about the same duration. I'm also gonna make sure that it's smooth. That I don't hesitate or pause. I want this to be a flowing 
you know, I, I, I look at the sunrise and sunset, even though those are misnamed, it's actually the planet spinning. But at the top of the sunrise, it doesn't like stop and wait three minutes before it starts to set. At the top of the rise, it's setting. And at the, at the middle of the night, it starts rising, so to speak. I want my breath to reflect that harmony. I don't even have to know why, it just makes sense. Now I'm breathing into the nose, out through the mouth. I'm making the duration about the same. I don't need to know that when I do that, I'm closing and opening the switch that keeps my sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system in balance. I don't need to know that when I do it in a smooth, cyclical way, I'm releasing trauma from my body. I don't need to understand the mechanics of any of that. All I do Say is that again. focus. Cut out for a minute. Okay. I don't need to know or understand the switch between the top of my tongue and the top and the top of my mouth. I don't need to understand that when I do this and that tongue touches the top. I don't need to know that there's a switch, a literal electrical switch in there that opens the currents that run up and down the front and back of the body. I don't need to understand that when I, I don't need to understand. I don't need to understand that this brings my sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems back into balance. I don't need to understand the mechanics of that. I don't need to even understand that breathing in this smooth cyclical balanced way brings my heart and brain back into coherence. I don't need to understand any of it. All I do is bring my attention to my breath and to breathing in a harmonious, calming way. I don't even need to notice that when I do that, I just took my attention off creating shit. I don't even need to notice that. It's already done. And from here, I'm present. I feel more calm. Let me ask you some very complicated and advanced spiritual questions. <laughs> Are you going to enjoy your life more when you're calm and present or less? More. Oh, my gosh. You were able to figure that one out. That was deep. How about this one? Um, will you probably be able to respond to perceived threats or challenges more effectively or less effectively when you're calm and peaceful and centered and present? More effectively. Oh my God, you are a genius. Okay, one more question. <laughs> Will you probably be able to perceive what's happening more or less accurately if you're calm and present and centered? Yes. My gosh, golly, jeepers, gee whiz. You just sold me on this breathing. I'm going to tell you that much. You just got me totally sold and convinced. I have a question for you. Bring it. Are, are you able to eventually get to the point where you can do it even when you're living life? I mean, when you're working, when I'm out feeding horses, when I'm out mowing grass? Do you okay. get to the point where you can even do it then? I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn that question around because you asked me a you. I'm going to make it a you. But but I'm not like to turn it that way. Imagine this. Imagine you ask, "Can I?" You can get I? it? Yes. Right. Yes. Because almost yeah. everybody does the yeah 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 unconsciously all the time. So if you don't mind, close your eyes and let's breathe for a minute and just relaxing and calming down. And the beautiful thing is when you breathe like this, you don't have to try to relax and calm down. You just do it. Now, could you choose to do this more often? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. And what I'm going to do is I'm not being rude. It's just the power of a yes or no question is really powerful. So even if your mind says, well, yeah, but, but just, just say, I love you mind, but he asked me for a yes or no. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you could, you could, yeah, yes. all right. And feel the joy of that yes, okay? Yes. And if you were to start doing almost anything more often by choice, could it become a habit? Yes. Almost anything. I mean, hell, everything you've been doing, you just did it so much it became a habit, right? Okay. Yes. So if you 
start by choosing to become more calm, would it make sense that perhaps calmness would expand? Yes. Ah, it could take on a momentum of its own in a way. Okay. Would you agree? All right. Yes. So then, you know how, just, just stay with me, be breathing and relaxing, and, and I'm going to ask something. You, have you heard about this, this whole craze about, like, rewiring the brain and neuroplasticity and all that stuff? Okay. Yes. So for me, for me, when I first heard about it, it was really great news because I had heard, like everybody else, that synaptic connections can't be changed, brain damage can't be healed, blah, all the bullshit. And then when I heard about neuroplasticity and the fact that you can rewire the brain, I instantly felt hopeful and like, wow, this, this means maybe I could change. Later, though, as I got more aware, I thought, why would I want to go and rewire my brain without a direction or intention when I could accept the possibility that I could just release and allow my brain to be in its perfect state. Like if we're honest, if we're honest, those of us who start trying to rewire our brains, we got to admit like tra the word transformation. Maybe you've heard me talk about this. <clears throat> Everybody's raving about transformation. I say transformation on its own is kind of worthless and, and people go, wait, 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 what do you mean by that? Because you, transformation doesn't have a direction. If, if you were to start chopping small pieces off of your body one at a time, that would be a transformation. If you were, if you were to be thrown into a pit of fire ants while you were covered with honey, you would be transforming before our very eyes as they ate you alive. If you decided to go on a quest to watch SpongeBob SquarePants with your, like, chained to a chair with your eyes propped open with toothpicks and someone played SpongeBob SquarePants for 24 hours a day and you didn't get to sleep and they did it for 10 days, you'd be transforming into a damn suicidal psychopath every minute so transformation doesn't mean anything without a direction without a compass transformation towards what well similarly to me similarly what you and i are talking about right now changing habits rewiring the brain without a direction and and how would i pick the right direction because listen we think we we think there's a right or wrong you think thought that if you were keep breathing now honey if you you thought that if you were to only just figure out how you're creating this you'd be fine you really wanted that you've been involved in self-help for how many years <laughs> i lost count yeah and you still now listen i'm not picking at you count. You know I love you. By by now, you and me, you know I love you. You know I'm not I'm not coming down on you. I am I'm kind of fucking with you for a minute. When I say after all those years of self help, the best you could still come up with was what almost everybody else does. If I could only figure out how I'm causing this, which is the one thing that guarantees you'll never get out of it. So here now we change directions, and the direction is presence. It's presence. Is there any possibility that as you breathe and sit calmly, your brain is rewiring itself without you trying? Yes. Oh, and is there any possibility that as you choose to breathe for one single minute into peace, that perhaps trauma that's been stored in your cells might be flowing out with the next exhale? Yes. Wow. Oh, now I heard Eckhart Tolle say something probably 10 years ago. It went over my head. I didn't understand it. And yet I felt so much peace hearing the statement. He said, you'll get more out of one minute of conscious breathing than you'll get out of any three or four day seminar or week long seminar that you could ever go to you'll get more out of one minute of conscious breath now i didn't know i didn't get it it was years later that i discovered that the cl clients i was working with that were getting the greatest results the more i got them calm they were starting to breathe like a baby and i i, I took years to notice 
And it was maybe three or four years ago that I really, yeah, three or four years ago, I really brought the breath in. And oh my God, not only the results that people were getting, I mean, I was getting miraculous results constantly. When I brought that in intentionally, not only did the results go through the roof, they were much more lasting. So my next question for you is, is it possible that if you were to intentionally set up intentional reminders to focus on this breathing including reminders of why it is you're doing it might that help you to make this a habit yes is it possible that you could make it so much of a habit that it becomes second nature yes is it possible that if you made this second nature you might discover that it was your first nature Yes. And maybe you just got away from it. And once you got anxious, once you, as a child, when you learned that it wasn't safe to express your feelings, you stopped breathing to make damn sure you never expressed your feelings. So you could think for yes. just one minute. Yeah. Think for just one minute about all the times that those adults around you showed you it wasn't okay to express your feelings. And it was as fun and joyful as you were crying and they said, you little fucker, I'll give you something to cry about. You're like, I can't, it's not safe to cry. And then when you were scared, sometimes they thought they were helping you by making you go do it when you were scared. They didn't understand that if they'd help you through the fear, you'd be able to do it. So they, when you were scared, they fucked that up. Then when you were angry, they met it with a bigger anger that showed you you couldn't win. You said, fuck, I can't express my fear. I can't express my sadness. I cannot express my anger. This is not safe. And you stopped breathing so that you wouldn't feel. And then one day, horror of horrors, you were really happy. You were really having fun. You were really expressing your joy. And they shut that down too. And you said, that's it. I'm never going to feel again. And you stopped breathing. You, so, so you might now hear this crazy thing. Keep breathing, honey. Keep breathing. Let that come up and out. Let it all come up and out. You may now be able to hear something I often say, which a lot of people just kind of freak out the first time they hear me say it. Out of all the skills that you have ever developed in your lifetime, you've never practiced polished perfected and mastered anything to the level that you've practiced how to not feel and the primary technique for not feeling is don't breathe because if i breathe those damn feelings come up i'm not gonna do that now isn't this amazing it was hidden in plain sight it's the most obvious thing in the world and nobody knows it <laughs> nobody sees it because we made it the one place we never look so instantaneously you start this breathing you start really choosing this you look at what i'm talking about and instantly the emotions come up and as the emotions come up and they come out you ain't worried about them are you no you're just feeling and when you breathe like this and the emotions come up you actually aren't just crying again you're actually expressing the emotion express pressing it out but you ain't trying to get rid of it you ain't faulting it you ain't hiding from it you ain't denying it you ain't fretting about it and you ain't saying oh fuck it you're actually feeling it and expressing it automatically how cool is that so breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, ah, in through the nose, and out through the mouth, ah, and then making it about the you same duration. Go ahead. You know, it's even more timely. I will, I will, listen, I will listen on one condition. Okay. That you continue the breath just as much while you tell me. I think this is very timely because 
I've been recently going back through my childhood because of some events that have come up. Going back through old pictures, mm. reliving mm -hmm. the childhood, reliving and breathing while yes. you're reliving, reliv breathing deeply while you're reliving it, keeping that breath smooth. Now, this is the moment. Now, listen, I'm, I'm listening and I'm going to share the next level with you. I'm going to, this might seem rude, but you know I only interrupt to help. Okay? Listen to this. I have a phrase that I want you to write this down and put it around your house. And I want you to hear me right now while you're telling me. And then I'm going to hand the microphone back and you're going to continue telling me. Watch this. There's literally nothing I'm ever going to say that is as important as being present before I speak it. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that two or three times. With most people, I say it a hundred times. You and I only have an hour here this time. There's nothing I'm ever going to say that is as important as being present before and while I say it. And almost all of us, we start talking, we go out of presence, we're spewing out the shit from our unconsciousness without ever knowing it, which is why all of our relationships go to shit and we end up feeling like shit and then we don't even want to talk. Blah, 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 blah. So we're going to do it differently now. And what we're doing is we're creating a new habit. Up until now, you would start to talk. You would talk from your unconsciousness. You weren't present, and the things went the way they went. Right now, while I got you breathing, and this comes up to come out, we're going to keep breathing. And there's going to be every millisecond, there's going to be the opportunity for you to choose to fall out of presence and focus on the things in the talking again. I'm helping you to stay in the presence while you do it. And I would love to hear more. That was if, it. Okay, okay. And I was going to say, if it's even necessary that there be more. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's right. I just thought that was interesting, the timing. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so breathe in now. And I, I saw on your face when I talked about the being shut down, you, you were able to relate to having your fear shut down, having your anger shut down, having your sadness shut down, and having your joy shut down. And virtually everyone has had at least one of those moments. And we all think that trauma means you're in a car wreck and you watch everyone in your family die, you know, and certainly that can be trauma. But what people, most people don't realize is that having your joy shut down even once is utterly, totally, and completely devastating. And the vast majority of people never recover because they never hear this message. They haven't heard this message. They haven't started breathing. They don't understand. They say, I don't want to cry about it anymore. And they don't understand. They could cry it out. So notice you're starting to feel, quote, better, starting to feel more the way you prefer. And there's plenty more emotion, <laughs> plenty mm -hmm. more emotion in there to come out. And listen to this. I got great news. It's not bottomless. The only reason you ever felt that that emotion was bottomless is because you weren't actually letting it out. You weren't breathing in a way that let it come out. You were breathing in a way sometimes that let it come up and you would cry and you would go, oh, this is still here. This is never going to change. If now, if I could only understand why I'm creating this, then I'd be able to change it. And that kept you forever in the loop like everybody else. <laughs> so now... Every time I take my attention and I aim it to my breath, I'm automatically taking it off of what I was creating. Oh my God, if I ever needed a reason to focus on my breath. Now, I have an analogy for you. It. Yeah, this would be it. 
Now, I got an analogy for you. I want you to imagine, eyes closed, breathing deep. Imagine that you were going through life, and there was a, just picture the scariest monster you can imagine. It might be Godzilla. It might be like a giant King Kong. Who knows? The scariest monster you can imagine. And... You found that at different times in your life, it was chasing you. And man, it had these big claws and fangs, and it was big and err. Uh, and sometimes when you would run fast from it, it would chase you faster. It's like, I can't get away from this monster. I can't get away from this monster. And it goes on for, for your whole life. That monster is always behind you. Oh, my God, there it is again. Oh, my God. And then one day, you sit down and you calm down for some reason. And when the monster shows up, you look at it and you see that there's a hose going into it. And you follow the hose and you realize it's plugged into you. It's an inflatable toy. <laughs> and you've been fueling it the entire time it was only arising from you the entire time and if you would bring your breath into yourself that whole thing would deflate and disappear so there's a phrase keep on breathing that's right there's a phrase that i really 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 like and uh, it's from one of the Sufi mystic poets. And it says, I awaken to find that my only tormentor all along was that part of myself left over from yesterday. I awaken to find that my only tormentor all along was that part of myself left over from yesterday. And I was here trying to figure out how I'm creating that shit instead of trying to focus on loving myself. And that part of me that was left over from yesterday is what I think and believe that I know that keeps showing up around me saying, when are you going to love me? And you said, no, I'm going to figure out how I'm creating this shit. And if love is the answer, and it obviously is... When you're going to start loving yourself. I've been resisting that. Yeah, you've been resisting. Well, you didn't believe you deserve love, so you sure as hell weren't going to give it to yourself, and you thought it would be selfish to love yourself because that's what they told you. There's nothing more selfless that you could ever do than being totally selfish. <laughs> and so today it turns, doesn't it? Yeah. And you even know it, and it doesn't matter that you've been working on yourself forever. Today, it changes, and you know it beyond the shadow of a doubt. Yep. Yep. I knew that when I woke up this morning. Yep. Today's the day. Today's the day. Hmm. Probably didn't know it'd be this easy. No. <laughs> so what would it be like to love yourself so much that you went around your house and do you have a printer at home uh -huh. all right so imagine today that you go online and you find 10 or 20 even pictures that you just love. You could go to somewhere like Shutterstock.com. I'll give you my affiliate link so I can make 20 cents. I'm just kidding. Go to Shutterstock.com or one of the photo things and type in beauty, beauty, type in love, type in bliss, find some pictures, and then type some, make some memes for yourself. Eight and a half by 11. If you have photo paper that'll last a little bit longer, that's great. If you don't, it don't really matter that much. Print out some beautiful pictures with words on them that you typed in, and one of them might be, one of them, one of those might be, breathe and love yourself now. One might be, I am making this breath my second nature until I realize it was always my first nature. That might be another one. You could make another one that says, breathe in love now. Another one might be a question. Why is it okay for me to breathe 
and release everything that's not me. And you just make these beautiful things and you put them all over your house. Is there anyone in your home who would think that that's funny or crazy or silly? No. Okay. And if there was, I was going no. to give you the antidote. But if there isn't, then just fucking do it. <laughs> and listen, wherever you sit on the commode, let one of your favorite ones be right there at the <laughs> right across in front of you okay I recommend yeah. do you have any kind of a music system in your house that's not that but yeah okay so do you like music uh -huh. okay so there's something called solfeggio frequencies are you familiar mm -hmm. yes okay source vibrations is a, a, a artist that has made now multiple discs all mp3 downloadable of the solfeggio frequencies in different music no words which is really awesome okay and you can just go buy a couple you know sets of mp3s put them on loop and have a place in your house or through your entire house where that music is playing and it might be a place where you like a sitting room people say or a reading space where you can go sit between the speakers Ideally, you'll have a place where you can sit between the speakers. Um, I'll just show you something here. Check this out. There's my honey, by the way. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> she said, hello. See, see, you see hey, this? Hey, Dewey. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> so you see this crazy system I'm talking about? I know. I love your system. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is that you can have a, a $50 blue... Oh, my signal my fingers went okay you can have a $50 Bluetooth speaker <laughs> you know and it's great you can have headphones for God's sake but if you'll sit with those frequencies bathing you and say wow I'm sitting here bathing myself in these loving healing frequencies while I'm breathing what a wow look at me taking care of me what was the man again um, uh, the group, uh, it, it's, uh, it's an artist. I think it might actually be just one guy, but they're called, it's called Source Vibrations. And, okay. and you know, here, last couple, last couple pieces here. So, you know, flowers around the house that you like, prominently displayed, and you don't have to spend money on it. Go damn pick something out of the yard. It don't matter. Flowers, essential oils. Um, mm -hmm. if, if there's a, if there's a florist, I mean, shit's getting crazy in places right now, but if, if there's a florist, like ask them, Hey, when, if you have any roses that go past their date, I'd like to buy a few dollars worth of them every week, put the petals in your bathtub and soak and listen to some beautiful music. Give yourself the kindness that you've been wishing you got as a baby be the parent to yourself that they couldn't be you accept the possible i know you accept the possibility that you set them up to be that way so you ain't gonna like what are you gonna wait for them to come back and do it no you be the one to do it start loving yourself now love yourself the way the ultimate lover would love you be kind be gentle be thoughtful and mainly remind yourself to breathe it's number one it is the single most important thing and when you start looking on facebook and you see troops called in for blah 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 and you go wait a minute maybe that's true maybe it isn't am i gonna be more resourceful fret fretting about it or am i gonna be more resourceful being present and what if what if when I sit down, being that I'm the center of the universe, ultimately, what if when I sit down and I calm the center of the universe,
what if when I calm the center of the universe, some guy over here that was about to give the order has second thoughts? Five hundred years ago, six thousand miles away. What if when I calm down the center of the universe and I start to feel those tensions and those constrictions that have been there all along, but I quiet down and calm down enough that I feel them and they start to come apart. Some farmer who's been praying for rain for weeks because his whole village is about to die of starvation if their crops don't get rain. As I calm down, it starts to rain 8,000 miles away, 400 years in the future. What if I am the center of the universe? I mean, from where I look, in every direction I look, it sure as hell looks like I'm the center of the universe. Nobody's going to convince me otherwise. So maybe it's all arising from me. And maybe I've been nursing my wounds and holding my grudges buried so deep that I wasn't even aware of them and I would deny them. Do you have a good reason to not become calm and centered and present? No. Do you have any reason to choose to not stay that way? Uh -oh. Say that again. You cut out. Yeah. Okay. So my first question is, do you have any reason to not become centered and calm and present? You said no. And my second question is, do you have any reason to not stay that way? No. Well, you sure do have a whole lot of reason to become present and stay that way. Yes. More, th more than ever. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad I created you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. Of course, there's only one of us here. That's right. So let's, let's seal this with a kiss, and here's the kiss. If you're not creating your reality, instead you're actually only seeing the reflections of what is within you, then what does that mean to have me show up? You're my reminder. That's right, and I'm part of you. This reminding you that this option exists. Just like everybody else is reminding you all those options exist. You had me show up to remind you that this option exists within you, ever available, ever present. And you can become a teacher of this. And it doesn't matter if you only teach your dog. Your dog already knows, actually. Even She's if already you, there. Yeah, exactly. Even if you <laughs> only teach one relative who's curious. And, you know, uh, the last piece I really want to say for now is keep this in mind. While you were frantic, you weren't going to be able to teach too much of shit to anybody because they were like, what the fuck? Oh, I want to listen to you. You're frantic. You know? But, but as, the, as the fear rises... The skepticism drops, and you're going to have people ready and willing to hear you that weren't ready and willing to hear you before. And with you actually beginning to live it, they're going to see and feel the difference in you, and they're going to say, okay, what's that thing you were talking about? What was the app? Uh, Insight. A reminder? Yeah, Insight Timer. Insight. And there's several. There's really several of them. Um 
the the cool thing about like insight timer is you can really customize the reminders um, I think there's even a way now that when the reminder goes off it'll bring a picture up like so there's cool stuff you can do with it um, okay I would like to uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this I'm going to upload it um, and I'll have it where you can view it very soon probably within a half an hour um, I, I save them on YouTube in a way that other people can't see them and I'll just share it with you and you know Patty I normally would I've been I've been having this running in the back of my mind this entire session so I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it now normally normally if I felt this I, I'd say this has happened five times in the last several years five times so this is kind of rare and it and it did happen about 15 minutes into this session I had a feeling I'm gonna to want to I'm gonna to want to share this session publicly like this is gonna benefit an absolute ton of people so here's my question for you if I blur your face where no one knows who you are there's no connection would you be okay with me sharing this publicly where no one knows it's you because I literally feel like this session takes that core central message in a very simple powerful way that will probably help everybody that ever sees it as long as I blur uh, blur your face is that okay with you yes okay it thank is. you thank you it's gonna really bless like I want to start sharing this one today because this is such a core central global issue and I really feel it'll help I feel it beautiful thank you for that now, I see, see you it. you already get to be a blessing already and everybody it touches is inside of you so you're already calming yourself All right, I'll have this up. I love you so much, sweetheart. I have this uploaded for you probably within a half an hour, and I'll share it I'll back with you in Messenger. Thank you. You're welcome. Aloha. See you soon. Aloha.